Yo, what's up everybody, it's Tuna. We're finally back for PoE 3.24, it feels like it's been an eternity. And I'm like really, really stoked because this league is actually looking pretty insane. The end game changes in 3.24 are, you know, bigger than one video can explain, but we're gonna go through some of the biggest changes that I think are gonna be hitting this league. And in general, what you need to be aware of, you know, going um, from 2.23 to 3.24. So let's, uh, you know, start it off with the biggest change, of course. Um, you know, this is like an iconic item in Path of Exile, however, they're removing sextants. Sextants are sort of something that has become a bit annoying in the meta because um, essentially what they do is they provide you with additional power to your farming strategies. But in order to obtain that additional power, it means that you not only either have to sit in your hideout and roll them for hours on end. You know, I would know I would have like four hour plus rolling sessions off stream and on stream last league when I was playing, you know, group self found extremely annoying process. But yeah, so sextants are gone. And you might think to yourself, well, that's a massive nerf. But, um, you know, GGG aren't stupid. Like, they always uh, help, you know, compensate in one way or another. And the way that they actually implemented this change is very promising and very good for the end game, in my opinion. And also very good for your wrist or your, uh, you know, patience for tra trading and that kind of stuff. So, what are they doing to compensate? It is scarabs. So, not only are they introducing a ton of new scarabs, but these scarabs are completely overhauled in that, you know, Rusted Scarab, uh, Polished Scarab, Gilded Scarabs, which are, this is not what they're called anymore, but yeah, essentially they all do different things. And each one of them has intrinsic value in that they provide you with something that you might want even though you're using a higher variant of that Scarab. Now the rarity of them is still gonna be sort of um, varying from lower end Rusted up to, you know, the new uh, types like Winged and all that, all that kind of stuff. However, uh, the main thing is that you can actually use multiple of the same type of scarab. So you can use a rusted scarab with a polished scarab with a gilded scarab. And what they do is they provide you with, um, you know, additional buffs to the mechanic that you're trying to farm. And luckily they actually give us some examples here so I can go through and show you guys what I mean by that. Now the new tab is going to look pretty insane. And at this point, if you don't have a fragment tab, you can safely click purchase on that because it is the most overpowered tab in the game. Like it's completely broken. It's absolutely necessary to play the game at the moment. I think it would be more necessary than, um, you know, divination card tab for sure. So you can see that every uh, scarab here is now having like, you know, three plus scarabs each. So this is what it would be traditionally, you know, like rusted, polished and gilded. But now we're getting additional types like you can here see here up to winged and then an additional type again you can see here it is like another one and uh on top of that there is this row here at the bottom which we don't know how or what they do just yet they haven't actually announced that however you know if they do announce it in the near future i will probably include that in my farming strategies as well as you know a little bit of a rundown of uh, exactly what i'll be doing in the league and whatnot uh, yeah, you can see that there's like a crazy amount of scarabs now and there's scarabs for things that otherwise wouldn't have had scarabs in the past like essence for example like June like shrines and uh, So on and so forth. So it's uh, it's really cool like harvest as well uh, You got Alva um, Yeah, I mean, it's it's just great. Honestly, you got scourge and beyond right so you can like force beyond now and all that kind of stuff but this isn't even the most exciting thing about this because, yeah, like, look at what these scarabs do. So we're just going to go through some scarabs here that they have provided examples for us. And sorry that it's not centered. Um, but yeah, Divination Scarab of Completion. So you can see that it's not called Winged anymore. They're going to have, like, different names. Um, this is going to take some time getting used to for me. So you might hear me say, like, Winged. But, yeah, you can sort of expect me to talk, be talking about, like, this variant. Divination Scarab of Completion. And you can see that it says Limit 1. And that means that you can only have one completion uh, you know, one scarab of completion, but you can have other uh, divination scarabs, you know, of like lower types. Uh, so divination cards which drop in an area have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack. Uh, this is pretty, pretty crazy, right? Because essentially it just means that you are getting, um, you know, 20% chance to be getting like a mage blood or something like that. And if you have seen uh, some of the new Atlas passive nodes that we'll go through here in a little bit, there's some pretty insane stuff that you can do with Divinity cards and in general with farming. Um, it's, it's very, very crazy Scarab to have on there, but it's not even the craziest one of them all, right? Then we have a Divination scar uh, Scarab of Curation, which is 10% more Divination cards found in the area per different favorite map. 
However, divination cards drop in an area are replaced by those of your favorite map. So essentially what you'll want to be doing is you have 12 favorite map slots. So what that means is that you can have up to 120% um, you know, more divination cards found in the area. And then not only that, it also means that you do not necessarily have to be farming Crimson Temple in order to drop the Apothecary. So as long as you have it favorited, right? So what that would look like is you will have 12 different types of maps favorited. And um, of course, you will have either you will have Crimson Temple as well as Burial Chambers or whichever map is going to be dropping the Apothecary as well as um, the, the Doctor, of course. And there's some other really cool ones that you can put in there. Like So there is a massive amount of Divination cards that you can actually drop in this game. And of course, you don't have to always remember which one is the most valuable and so on and so forth. Because thankfully, we have Peewee Ninja, which is going to be a resource that you can use in order to sort of look up which cards are valuable, right? So you can see here, you have like House of Mirrors, you have uh, Unrequited Love, Prince of Devotion, Apothecary, I see Brothers, and the Immortal, right? So if you were to want to know where exactly these cards drop, what you would do is you would type Peewee Wiki up here, and then you would type the Immortal. And of course, some of these don't have, um, like they don't drop in maps. Like for example, the Immortal actually only drops in Halls of the Grandmasters. However, uh, you know, Unrequited Love, let's just check that one up, for example. Uh, this one drops in Maze, Temple of Decay, Vault Pyramid, Vault Temple, Vault of Siri. So all you would have to do in order to drop this uh, Divination Cards, which gives you, you know, it's a 1 in 16 for uh, 19 Mirror Shards, then you would have to favorite either one of these maps. And, you know, favoriting more of the maps doesn't actually give you a higher chance to drop the Divination Card, because all you want to do is you want to add the Divination Card to the drop pool. Um, and yeah, so basically that's how, how you'll go about adding valuable divination cards to your drop pool. And you can see that this is, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy because adding more maps to your drop pool doesn't mean that you're getting less of a specific card. Rather, you're adding the, the cards to your drop pool. So you can also farm the map that you enjoy. So, you know, if for example, you want to run, um, Jungle Valley or Tropical Island or Strand instead of having to go to Crimson Prison or, um, you know, any other map to farm div cards. You don't have to anymore with the Scarab, which is which is damn insane. It's like, it's crazy. It's really game changing. Um, and you'll be able to drop cards from all like 12 zones that you have favorited. So at all times, you'll be able to have all, you know, 12 most valuable divination cards uh, in your drop pool. And you'll be able to, of course, enhance the amount of divination cards that drop thanks to the more multiplier that you see here. Next, they showed us some scarabs from Ultimatum and they really went hard on these. So the combination of these is like pretty insane. Like I I don't, I know Ultimatum hasn't been like the most um, insane mechanic, but these scarabs make it look pretty cool, right? So Ultimatum Chaotic Rewards in the area uh, offering Catalyst will offer inscribed Ultimatums instead. Inscribed Ultimatums can give you a chance of finding cool uniques as well as potentially also um, you know, uh, like mirroring items or all that kind of stuff. So they're they're pretty they're pretty cool uh, in scrap ultimatums, and you might make them a good profit running the scarab. However, like you know, the numbers I can't give you anything of the sort, but we're just gonna be looking at the scarabs for now. And we also have the ultimatum scarab of catalyzing, which says ultimatum encounters in the area will only offer catalysts as a reward. And as we saw in the previous slide, all catalysts will be uh, you know inscribed ultimatums instead. So basically you can run the catalyzing catalyst with inscription um, scarab, sorry, I mean. And yeah, you'll be able to basically get every round will give you inscribed ultimatums. Then we have the ultimatum scarab of dueling and this one will always lead to a boss if possible. And if possible, it just basically means that like, you know, there's a keystone that makes it so you can't get the boss. So make sure to inspect the keystone in order to get the boss. So yeah. You'll be able to put the scarab in, and then um, you'll always get a boss, and which means that you'll be able to target farm the uniques more, more reliably. For example, you know the Mahuk Sotl Shield or the Wand or the you know maybe the Hate Forge if you're lucky. So this is a great buff to SF, but also anybody who's looking to target farm uniques, or if at any point those uniques become expensive, then the market can be regulated through um, the scarab providing access to it. Then we have the ultimatum scarab of bribing, which um, this is limited to two, unlike the previous ones that we all saw. So which means that you can put them, you know, you can put two of them, one in each slot, and then you will get basically 300% increased experience from ultimatum monsters. But it will also grant you uh, rewards as though you completed two additional rounds, meaning that 
essentially it's it's basically like you know how ultimatum gives you better rewards the further on you are it just means that you'll be able to get better rewards as though you've already completed four rounds from round one so essentially once you get to the end round you know imagine it was like round 10 or something like that you'd effectively be at round 14 for you know reward scaling which uh you know could be pretty good but we don't know i mean like ultimatum is one of those mechanics that is very um it's a mixed bag people like it and um they want to farm it but it's not very good at least it was in this league but hopefully these scarabs make it so and then we of course have the you know the old rusted ultimatum scarab which all it does is it gives you an ultimatum encounter and it'll be allowing you to access the mechanic but um you know what happened here is that essentially gg is, try is tying a lot of intrinsic uh value in these scarabs meaning that you might potentially get locked out of farming um things because of the fact that the more intrinsic value is tied to a scarab the more expensive it becomes and uh the, the more expensive it becomes the less, less accessible it becomes but to counter that um you know gg have given us an insane buff to the atlas passive tree in that you can now pretty much guarantee link mechanics spawning through the atlas passive nodes so yeah i just wanted to show you guys a little bit all right so i've entered ultra widescreen mode here to give you guys a little bit of a better overview and on the left we are going to be having the patch 3.23 variant of the tree and on the right we're going to be having the 3.24 so that's what next league is going to be so essentially what you could do is you could type something like delirium right and you can see that the delirium nodes are giving you four percent chance to spawn a mirror of delirium however if we were to type it here delirium you see that these nodes are now giving you a 12% chance, um, which is pretty, uh, it's like a pretty big buff. And yeah, basically just like specking these nodes here is going to give you, uh, you know, if you look at the stat summary, that alone is going to be providing us with, uh, unfortunately, the stat summary is not yet f uh, fully functional, but it's going to be giving you 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50, 60% uh, chance to spawn delirium, essentially just from these nodes. And yeah, so essentially you'll be able to do that with pretty much every mechanic because it's not only Delirium, but it's also, for example, Expedition here, giving you 12% from 4%. And you can expect about the same changes for all the other uh, mechanics on the tree. So if you were to literally type anything on the tree, uh, which is like a mechanic that you can spawn, it's going to be buffed by about threefold. So um, it's going to be able to, you know, there, there is no barrier to entry to farming a mechanic now, and the Atlas Passive Tree provides you with so much power that you'll be able to effectively farm anything that you want at zero cost. However, the Scarabs are there to provide you with additional value that will give um, you know, incentives to both invest in your, uh, in your mapping strategy, as well as you know, um, additional rewards which potentially are not accessible through any other means. And it also creates very fun strategies and also very interesting strategies that otherwise wouldn't have existed in the past, such as being able to farm, you know, different maps um, and getting all kinds of divination cards and buffing your rewards that way through, you know, you know, maybe potentially scaling pack size in certain maps rather than going for certain layouts. And I think that's extremely clever and very interesting. So it not only buffs the top end and gives you more aspirational content in the sense of, um, you know, being able to do harder but also more rewarding content but it does also regulate the price of scarabs in that they have intrinsic value tied to them and it does not shut out noobs from being able to access league mechanics because of the fact that the atlas passive tree provides you with such a heightened chance to spawn those mechanics at pretty much zero cost right well of course atlas passive um points are uh, you know expensive in that like you know you can have opportunity costs here yeah i mean just the fact that you can get like just right off the bat with um with just a few nodes you can get pretty much like 60 percent chance to spawn a uh expedition encounter is crazy right and that's not even accounting for the fact that we could potentially um get even more of it <laughs> from other places so i think you'll be able to potentially just guarantee every mechanic uh in the game right it's just insane here you have another eight percent and another eight percent there and we should have a little bit more here as well. 8%, 8%, 8%. Yeah. So basically you'd be getting a 100% chance to be spawning Expedition. But right off the bat, you know, coming out from the start of the tree, already 60% chance, which is damn insane. But not only have GGG provided us with the ability to, you know, um, invest in our strategies and also, um, you know, potentially get those mechanics for free. 
we are also finally getting Atlas Passive Tree presets. And I'm not exactly sure whether you have to do something to unlock these. They didn't really specify, but as I understand, this is actually quality of life and it's baseline. And as soon as you enter, you know, as soon as you're progressing your Atlas, you're going to be getting the opportunity to swap between three Atlas Passive Trees. Three is more than enough, in my opinion. It's perfect. It means that, you know, you can swap directly from your Atlas progression passive tree into your end game passive tree. And then you can also have an alternative passive tree uh, for potentially like if you want to do a little bit of delirium, but then you want to swap to blight at some point, you can do that now. And I think that's crazy, right? And imagine like you're playing with friends or something like that. Maybe you, you're a party player. You can have a party play tree and then you can have a solo tree and you can have multiple characters as well. And those characters will be able to do different farming strategies. I think this is one of the biggest changes by far. And it's something that I've been wanting in the game for so long. And I'm so happy to see that it's finally in the game. And I think all of us are going to be thoroughly enjoying this change. It's just fantastic. Now, not only that, like there's just crazy because not only did they add all of that, but GG have also added a new type of uber pinnacle content in form of maps. So they added basically, yeah, the mapping equivalent of uber pinnacle content. So it introduces T17 maps and these T17 maps, you're going to be a flat chance to, to drop them. And that is through your uh, watchstones. So your watchstones no longer provide you with a high chance to drop uh, higher tier maps. Rather, they're going to give you 0.5% chance to drop a T17 map per uh, watchstone meaning, uh, you know, you're going to have 2% chance to drop a map. You'll be getting these T17 maps. You might think to yourself, why do I care? Uh, because, yeah, of course, T17 maps are going to be providing you with additional loot. Um, higher tier means, you know, higher item level item bases as well. And, of course, you'll be able to access all of your normal league mechanics, but they are new layouts, which is pretty interesting. And they also have a type of, like, new uber bosses as the map boss themselves and those map bosses are going to be dropping these uh, fragments which combine five of them for one um invitation and this invitation is how you're going to be accessing the new uber bosses because ggg wanted to split the non-uber bosses with the uber bosses uh you know in order to allow people to not worry too much about farming the non-uber variants as opposed to the uber variants right as it was in the past i think there was no reason to ever farm the non-Uber variants because of the fact that Ubers existed and there was no opportunity cost aside for, you know, allocating one passive skill on your passive skill tree. Um, so this is a fantastic change, something that I've always wanted as well. And I'm so happy to finally see it in the game. And yeah, the way that we access it is also going to be giving, giving value to mappers uh, because you, you as a mapper, you'll be able to generate these maps and these maps are going to be selling for quite a quite a lot. Uh, especially since also the the uber uniques are unique to the ubers and um, essentially they are also buffed and they've added some new uniques to um, for example uber shaper and that sort of stuff so yeah that's it's a very good very good change i think overall i am extremely positive with the end game and I am extremely positive about all of the changes. Now, exactly how that's going to be affecting the market and the way that you farm, it is yet to be seen. But I do have generally a pretty good picture of how this is going to be working out. These maps are going to be extremely difficult to run and you'll have pretty strong characters for them. So that's always great. You know, wanting to uh, create an incentive for you to invest in your character is a great thing and something that is always going to give you, um, you know, essentially more drive to invest in your character. It's just, that's that's what Path of Exile is all about, right? New end game content is always better. So, you know, and this is not at the expense of the noobs or anything like that, because the noobs are gonna be dropping these maps and they can always sell them for a lot of profit rather than running them themselves. So yeah, essentially everybody wins in this situation. However, if you guys think that I've missed something, please do let me know. I am extremely positive about this patch and I'm extremely, extremely happy to see everything and all of the changes coming through. Um, 3.24 is going to be massive guys and you can expect a lot of videos coming from me about the end game as well as potentially some builds and all that kind of stuff I will be doing um, a lot of research into how to farm the end game mechanic and of course the, uh, the, the, the necropolis mechanic so yeah I can't wait guys I really can't thank you so much for watching everybody I hope you found this video a little bit informative or at least a little bit helpful and I hope you guys um, you know I hope to see you guys again soon 
you know, consider subscribing if you've watched all the way to the end of the video. Otherwise, I appreciate you anyways. 07. Hope you guys have a good day. Peace out.